Hi everyone, this is 2nd of January 2019 and I wish you all a wonderful and a very happy new year and a great year ahead uh, 2019. Continuing where I left it last year uh, with, my 25th, with my 33rd dish on the 25th of December 2018, a Sikandri run. I'm continuing uh, this year uh, with, with a dish again. Um, now, what I have tried to do uh, over the course of the last uh, year and continuing this year in 2019 is it, it, I try to have my food in three things, right? There's a twist, which means I make changes to the recipes or I bring in the three or four different types of recipes uh, to make a, a culinary dish. Or there's a tale, a story behind it, why it happened, how it happened, when it happened, etc., etc. Or a heritage aspect. When I say heritage, it's kind of a lineage, right? So Sikandri Ran had a story, right? Bharta, Bangan Bharta, which is called, considered a classic Indian dish. It's actually not Indian, right? It came from the Middle East through the conquest, of the, through the Mughal conquest. Uh, uh, or Tandoori, for that matter. As a matter of fact, the trivia here is, if you look at the top 10 Indian dishes that you are popular with globally, it doesn't matter, chicken tikka or what have you, eight of those actually did not originate in India, right? So that's the eclectic nature of Indian food and, and, and what a heritage that is. So today I'm going to make one such dish. So two things happen. Either the dish is never Indian but became Indian or secondly, the dish loses its source of origin because we have Indianized it so much. And one of the dishes I'm making today is Vindalu. I'm going to make mutton Vindalu. Very common, all restaurants carry it. Now, if you, Vindalu actually originated from Portugal. It's a Portuguese dish, which is basically creme de vinha de alhos. So, marinated in wine and garlic. Now, for those of us who have traveled, if you, if you remember the Portuguese influence Americas, if you go to places like Brazil, or even kind of Spanish-speaking um, Americas, Argentina, or, or even United States, south of United States, you get this pickled pork which is nothing but Vindalu when it traveled west, right? The other thing that I was intrigued with, you know, when you say Vindalu, it's supposed to be very spicy. And I was like, where, the, where, where did that originate from? So I spoke to a few Goanese friends of mine who are in Goa right now. They have cashew farms, cashew nut farms, and they're very much, you know, deep Goanese. And I asked them, I said, why did this happen? When a, because, and then they said, possibly one reason, and there's no... There's no verification or validation of this, but the the fishermen, the Goanese fishermen, when they eat the dried salted fish, they like it to spice it up with a lot of red chilies so that it loses the kind of the, the fishy, fishy smell. Possibly because the marinated pork and rabbit meat, which is what the Portuguese got, was alien to them, they did it the same way and then Indianized it. So, I mean, that's the fable or the legend of it. So today, from Bodo's Kitchen, it's mutton vindalu. So let me take you through the ingredients. And the most important thing of mutton vindalu is the masala or the marinade. So let me just take you through the spices. So here is uh, the, the dry spices, which I'm going to blend. So I've got cardamom, about 10, 12 pieces of green cardamom, four uh, inch and a half inch of cinnamon. Uh, these are uh, peppercorns, about half a teaspoon. And I got this from my um, from my mom's place in India. These are Indian peppercorns. With clo I got clove, which is about eight to ten pieces of clove, half a teaspoon of cumin. Sorry, not a powder, and one and a half a teaspoon of coriander, and fresh roots. These are turmeric roots. I'm not using the powder, so they're fresh because it won't go into the blend, right? And then here is uh, 15 Kashmiri red chilies. Now remember, I have removed the seeds, right? So otherwise, if I remove the seed, otherwise it, it's, it, it just it get, get very, very hot. So that, those are the dry spices that will go into the blend. Now, let me show you the second set of uh, uh, spices, which is garlic. I've got about five garlic cut into half. Uh, then I've got uh, ginger. I'm going to use about a teaspoon of that grated ginger. And this is an important ingredient. This is... Um, this is jaggery, but this is date jaggery. So you would be familiar with sugarcane jaggery. So this is date jaggery from my home, home state of Assam. And I've grated about a teaspoon of that to bring that sweetness. You can use sugarcane jaggery, or some people actually use sugar. And since I don't eat sugar, it's kind of completely ruled down in this dish. And here is about, uh, about roughly 550, 600 grams, a, a catty basically, which is 600 grams of, uh, of mutton, which is goat meat. So, so that's the ingredients. 
So now I'm going to uh, take you to the blending. I'll marinate it for 24 hours and I'm going to cook it tomorrow. Hi. So I put all the things here in, 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 the, in my blender. Now one of the things that I did not uh, uh, mention is the, the, the red, dry red chilies. I soak them in half a cup of wa hot water. So that goes in, the hot water also goes in. So it's kind of there. Now the most important ingredient for the blending, right? Or, or which will become the marinade is this, is the vinegar, right? Now you can use any kind of, typically you, you can use any kind of uh, malt or uh, cider vinegar. But if you go closest to the, you know, the, the, when they marinate uh, in, in Portuguese or in Portugal when they do that, the vinegar they use is uh, is is a it's from the region called Madeira in in in, in Portugal, and it's it's predominantly a, 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 a little bit it's not pure white it's kind of little brownish, and it's got a beautiful flavor. So what I did, I explored in Hong Kong, and I, uh, it's a pure rice vinegar. It has the same distinctive flavor that you get from this same Portuguese. Uh, kind of uh, vinegar that they use to marinate their meat, right? So this you have to be careful. So I'm going to use, I've got my measuring uh, spoons. So this is one fourth, one third of a cup. So I'm going to use one third of a cup and I'm going to put it in there. Right? And that completes the blending process and which is now what I'm going to do is blend that into a kind of a mash. Here. Hi, so I'm back with my gloves because I'm going to marinate using my hands. The <clears throat> blend is done, the masala is ready. Now I'm going to use my, uh, for, for marination, if you have vinegar, never ever use a plastic utensil. I would say don't even use a glass. So I use my stainless steel blending uh, kind of uh, utensil for, for marination because it's going to be marinated for 24 hours. So I'm going to put some mutton in and I'm going to take the sauce and use a spoon to put it. Now, I mean, you know, if the sauce is left over, that's fine. I will, I will use it to make again the next time. So you can make the sauce and kind of keep it, right? So marinate it and I'm going to leave it for 24 hours. Uh, <clears throat> And, and cook it tomorrow evening and I'll show you the cooking process which is extremely simple uh, you know. <clears throat> then Dalu with the masala we'll go in well put a cling wrap go in for 24 hours and I'll cook it around same time tomorrow for dinner yeah so we'll come back this is second Jan third Jan evening same time and take you through a very simple step of cooking mutton vindalu have a good night hi this is what a uh, third of January uh, so yesterday I marinated uh, this, which is the vindaloo, uh, and I actually took it out of the fridge about four hours back. And um, the reason for that is, you know, you don't want to cook meat straight out of the fridge, right? Because then the then the cooking textures is different because of, you know the, the, when you put it in the pan, the thing gets cooked first, and the core is still cold, right? So I took it out about three and a half hours. And also what it helps is this. You see that liquid that comes out? I'm going to decide whether I use that liquid or not as subsequently we go, right? So that's one. The second ingredient that I'm going to do, that, that's done. And only ingredient I'm going to put is this. Very finely thin chopped red onion. Oh. Now the last ingredient I'm going to put is this, which is uh, potato. One potato, I've soaked it in water. Uh, kind of cut it into you know, bite size and soaked in water. The reason I soak it in water, it takes the starch away from the potato. The reason for the potato, actually, you know, vindalu, a lot of people say vindalu, alu is the potato, which is Indian for potato. Nonsense, nothing. It comes from di aholos, which is basically garlic. The reason I am adding potato is because it absorbs the spices, right? So it makes it less hot if you will not that this is hot because i removed the seeds already as i showed you last yes last night or last evening so i'm going to add the potato at some stage it absorbs it and it also i love, love potato right all right so i've got the oil i'm using mustard oil right uh, because that's what i use and i i think it's healthy but you can use any vegetable oil so my mustard oil is pretty heated up one whole onion goes in there the more onion you put actually the the flavor just gets enriched, you know. So, 
my onions kind of really getting translucent. At this stage is what I'm going to put the uh, the mutton. Leave, you know, that's the part which I don't want. I'm going to do that and stir this, right? Now, one of the things, um, what has to be important is one of the things about cooking Indian food, especially the what I call the heritage Indian food, it has a legacy, a heritage, it has to be done slowly, you know. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to fry this for at least 20 minutes and then put hot water and then simmer it on a low flame for another 40 minutes. So that's going to be the exercise. I'm, I'm going to go offline now and come back when the dish is at an intermittent stage when I need to tell you how it's going to be cooked. So till then, let me just go ahead and take care of the dish. Hi, so you know what, I've been kind of frying it, cooking it for the last 25 minutes and that's, that's the kind of time it takes to make this happen. So I'm going to remove this and you can see uh, you know, the water has come out, it's beautiful. That's, I have not added any water. This is all the water from the meat. I actually added the potatoes there as well, which will absorb. So at this stage, I'm going to, the meat's really, that's the juice of the meat, right? So I'm going to add a little bit of water. This is hot water. And I'm going to do my final salt test. I'm going to now cover it and uh, put my timer for 40 minutes. Now that's been cooking already for 20 minutes, right? So I'm going to put my timer for 40 minutes, slow flame, come back, dish is ready. Well, that's 40 minutes is over, so I'm going to switch it off and uh, switch off the light gas. At this stage, my mutton vindalu is beautifully done, right? So that's kind of the mutton vindalu. Keep it closed and uh, do it. So that's the first dish from Boda's Kitchen for 2019 or in 2019 and uh, vindalu. And I'm going to try and do the next couple of dishes, what I would call a heritage dish which has a legacy, a history, and uh, a friend of mine did mention that. So, by the way, if you want to have vindalu, the best way to have it with rice, vindalu, and feni. Feni is a Goan cashew nut uh, uh, liqueur, uh, actually alcohol. Good night, cheers, and have a wonderful 2019 from Bodo's Kitchen.